Empirical provide compelling, interactive learning across a range of delivery options. Live on site, live online, or online anytime, we have a training course that is ideal for you. For a no-obligations chat about your training requirements, contact us at empirical.com. A key service type with respect to 5G is ultra-reliable, low-latency communications, or URLLC. Now that was part of the initial if you like, design of 5G and the first release from 3GPP, release 15, included some elements of that specifically related to the air interface more so. But as we move into the latter releases of 3GPP into release 16, 17, etc., what you find is we're already thinking about how we solve the problems and make it even better. So you'll hear the term E. URLLC, which is the Enhanced Ultra Reliable Low Latency Communications. So we're already in the process of changing and adapting how 5G works for this type of operation. So here we have a typical architecture. We've got a device, we've got a, a G no B, a new radio no B there. We've got our 5G core, and as you can see in the big black line in the middle there, that's the user plane, typically a guaranteed uh, bitrate service or GBR service going from the device all the way to the user plane function and out into the data network. The dotted lines there are the control. Now a key part of ultra reliable low latency communications is the implementation of the air interface and again that was done as part of some of the initial aspects as part of release 15. What you'll find however it's constantly being evaluated. So as part of the enhanced version, we're going to see some physical layer improvements, improving you know, how those channels worked, uh, assisting in better access for, obviously, the, the low latency, ultra-reliable aspects that we need. So that's a big topic, lots of different things in there to assist in improving the overall uh, radio interface with respect to this service. But it's not just about the air interface. So another area to look at would be features within the core to do with things like redundant transmission in the user plane. So in this particular diagram, you can see I've got one N3 connection. The N3 is the user plane between the G node B and the user plane function. But we can actually put multiple N3s in place for this, actually, this redundancy effectively, such that you know, if one of them is having a problem, we've got another one in place. And that, in could be going straight to an anchor user plane function, or it could be going each going through different intermediate user plane functions as well. But it goes even further than that. So using dual connectivity, and the key thing here, as you can see in brown there, we've got our uh, master G node B, and in blue we've got a secondary G node B base station. And the idea now, this is part of the standard dual connectivity approach, and assuming the device supports it, we can then facilitate putting our guaranteed bitrate, ultra-reliable, uh, low-latency communications. But as you can see from the slide here, I've got a black line going through, I've got a blue line going through, two user planes effectively, and therefore you can see how we have that resilience effectively across the network. Now, they're both sharing the same AMF, but you can see in this example, they could use different SMFs and user plane functions. And on top of that, you've got to think about how you manage that. So there is a lot of other detail that goes with this. So that's one of the key areas within the 5G core. So we've just introduced the fact that we have physical changes to the air interface, lots of different physical changes. We've identified that we've got this redundancy element, but there's other features in the core network as well. A key part of ultra-reliable low-latency communications has to be maintaining the connectivity of a device. And therefore, procedures related to handover, initial access, are key. So therefore, there's improvements with respect to those in the system. Now, that links into service continuity. You know, we've got this guaranteed bitrate. We have to maintain that service. So it's not only, only about optimizing the handover, it's optimizing the service as well. Now, what happens if you go into a cell and it's congested or you drop that guaranteed bitrate? 
Um, typically, that could be the end of it. But, but what we need to do is we need to get that guaranteed bit rate back up and running very quickly. So what we've added now is features related to automated GBR, guaranteed bit rate service recovery. So we can quickly put them back into place with having minimal impact on the overall end-to-end -end service. Now, as part of that end-to-end -end service, one of the key things will be the packet delay budget end-to-end. -end. But it's not just about the end-to-end -end service, we need to obviously monitor that. So what you'll find is linked into just all aspects associated with the service, we now have introduced quality of service monitoring, where, for example, the next generation RAN can monitor things like uh, the, the latency, the, the jitter, different aspects of the service. And that can link into, obviously, the end-to-end -end services as well to do with packet delay and different aspects. So overall, we're making big improvements with respect to providing a future for ultra-reliable, low-latency communications. Need to know more? Why not visit our store where you can choose from over 200 hours of video-based training? Alternatively, you can contact us to discuss any specific training requirements you may have.